people, how are you? I hope you're doing great. Today we're going to see this book, it's A Touch of Gold by Annie Sullivan. I have to say that this is the first book that she wrote and right now I'm waiting for the second one to be delivered. It's called The Tiger Queen and I'm very hyped about that book because she's a very nice person and she seems to be very sweet and she did an amazing pre-order thing and so yeah, I'm very excited for, for the book to come out. Well, not to come out, to get to my home because it, it's already out, but uh, yeah. Uh, what is this book about? Probably you are familiar with the idea of King Midas, who uh, everything that he touched turned to gold. And here in this story we are going to see like this story told from the perspective of his daughter. He has a daughter that's called Cora, and in the beginning of the book we are going to find like this little legend about how Minas Midas sorry, became the king that he is and what fact or what thing he did to obtain the ability to turn things into gold. And one of the things that he turned to gold was his daughter. Yeah, because he went to hug her and she turned to solid gold and she didn't move and she didn't breathe and so Midas did everything he could just to turn her daughter back to her human form but uh, something fails, you're going to have to read to see what happens. And she's human, but she's also golden. Golden as in she's she's still made of gold. It's like a living gold girl thing. And everyone thinks that she's cursed as his father was. And no one wants to come close to her because everyone is afraid of her because they think that she has some kind of curse that maybe, I don't know, she can turn you to gold just by looking at you or that if you touch her skin you're going to be turned to gold or whatever. So, you know, her rumors are, everything it's getting out of hand and she's like, she has spent all her life secluded in her palace where she is protected but also where people is protected from her. So, when we began the book we have this girl who thinks that the curse that his father had it some, so, somehow transferred into her. So she doesn't have many friends, she doesn't have many suitors because his father is trying to see her married off but everyone is scared of her when she discovers her face because she's always hiding herself under her clothes and when everyone catches a glimpse of her golden skin they get very scared and they run away or they want her for the money or maybe there's people who think that maybe if she can turn everything to gold like her father, maybe she can make me rich. So for her, she's in a very vulnerable, vulnerable place. And one of the things that we are going to find in this book is that whatever our parents did or whatever things that happened to them are not automatically, automatically transferred to us. We are our own person and we deserve to be who we really are. We don't have to hide. We are unique and we are made to shine every one of us so yeah there's a very profound and very powerful messages in this book and as you can see well i don't know if you can see it in the camera but i just put lots of lots of post-its inside the book just marking some passages that i thought that were very powerful with the idea of accepting ourselves accepting our limitations and accepting the things that make us different because that's what makes us special so we are going to find this this girl that suddenly something happens his father girl gets stolen and she goes to the sea just to get it back so we are going to follow this growing journey where she goes from being this secluded girl who's inside the tower of a castle just being like deprived of human contact or just relationships we're going to see how she grows out of the shell and how she opens herself to the world and she begins trusting people and she doesn't always get it right because you know not everyone is worthy in this world but she it's going to begin learning who he can trust who she can trust who she can't and I love how different she is when you end the book. You can see all this journey that she did literally in the in this ship and you can see all the journey that she did in her head, in the way that she thinks about others, about herself, about her powers, abilities. I mean, that for me was amazing. I mean, the book, it's great. I'm not going to, to describe more about the book, only that, that, that she's the daughter of King Midas and that she's somehow cursed and that she was isolated, only her cousin was with her, a girl called Hetty. 
Hetty was also an incredible character because when we first met her, she seems like to be like the pampered girl who only thinks about guys and getting married and getting sweet food and getting attentions. And when we began reading the book, we are going to discover that Hetty is just this amazing woman who was just also very similarly to her cousin. She was way too secluded and she needed her own space and, and her own people to bright to be bright and to shine and to be the amazing person she turns out to be. Also there is this guy who is called Aris, he's a count and um, he is the one that offers to help Cora recover the gold. And there is also this uh, captain called Royce, which I love from the very first page. And all the characters are amazing and all of them are very well constructed and they come alive in this book. And it's like that you can shake hands with them. And I love it, I love it. There's some things that you obviously see like a mile away. I mean, I was reading the book and I knew who was going to be the bad guys of the book. But even though I enjoyed seeing what the motives were, why they were acting like they were, and also I wanted to, to see how they were they were going to get a stop and how everyone was going to pay for the things that they did wrong. And uh, I love the narrative and I love how the story develops and I love the characters. And uh, don't, for, don't forget that this is a first book and I was completely amazed by how well writing it is. Okay, I say that, yeah, I could see a mile away who were the good guys and who were the bad guys. But as I say, even that, it didn't detract from the from the reading of the book because, okay, I knew that, but I wanted to know, as I say, the motives, the reasons, and what was going to happen with these people who were the bad guys. And I love to see how this story developed and it, how it unfolded and how it ended because I was thinking, okay, now how is it going to end? And it's amazing how it ends. And I think it ends in a way that probably it's going to be a second book. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> because... By the end of the book, I love everyone so much and I want to see how all these characters just keep on growing. I mean, they are amazing. Even though if it's just the one book, I mean, if it's an standalone, I love the ending because it's one of those open endings where whatever can happen and I love those kind of endings. Uh, I, I don't... I like books that end like, okay, this is it, but I love when there is these chances that things can go completely crazy and that you have to think, okay, what happens with that girl that runs away? What happens with that? There's, I don't know, whatever. Uh, I love it. I love it. I have to say that if you haven't read anything by Anne Sullivan, you have her second book that came out in September 10, uh, Tiger Queen, as I say, and you can pick this one that's like this sort of retelling or this story of Midas seen from his daughter point of view. And yeah, she takes the idea of, of Midas turning things to gold and she creates her own beast. And yeah, just pick it up. I love it. So yeah, sure. Thank you. Bye.